If you want to understand something, it usually is very helpful if you know where it's coming from, what's at the core of it and what it evolved into. For building in Minecraft it's important you know where architecture came from, as it will influence your block palette and will help you settle on a core style for your buildings. My name is Lentebrich, but you can call me Lente, and welcome to this video in which I will introduce you to the history of architecture. In the earliest written text about architecture, three concepts are mentioned. Durability, utility and beauty. First and foremost, it's important that buildings are useful. If you assume that a house is a shelter against the weather, a building without a roof cannot be a house. Some professions might also need rooms or buildings specifically made to suit their profession. As for durability, a house requiring a lot of maintenance is less preferable to a house with less maintenance. And lastly, there's beauty. It doesn't hurt a building to look good, though this is usually the least important factor. If we take these three core concepts a bit broader, we can apply it to any build. Whether it's landscaping, organics or structural. Whatever you are creating, all these factors are represented to some extent. The mentioned concepts were written down by a Roman in the first century, but of course there was architecture long before the Romans. It's only the oldest written text about architecture to have survived the centuries, so we'll have to go back even further. You could say the roots of all architecture can be found in vernacular architecture. Vernacular architecture is architecture based on geographical, cultural and technological background without the intervenes of professionals. It's also very context dependent. As technology or environments change, architecture might evolve. Over time conventions will form, and a convention in this case is just a best practice that even amateurs will recognize. The aesthetics of a building are far less important as the function of it. Even though vernacular architecture is usually not as elaborate or detailed as other types of architecture, it's a very good start to illustrate differences and similarities in architecture geographically and culturally, outlining the most important conventions based on functionality. Take for example buildings with sod roofs. Sod roofs were very common in rural areas up till about the 18th century. A sod roof is just birch bark covered with a layer of soil and grass to keep the bark in place. A very inexpensive roof design using materials very easy to get, though making such a roof is labor intensive. Without the technology of mass production, labor was cheaper than roof tiles. As technology advanced, this type of roof design was less and less used. If you live in a sub-Sahara setting, wood is pretty scarce. It's quite important for the durability of a building to have some materials for support. In a similar way as metal grids are used to give concrete strength in modern day, or pig hair in medieval times. Using wood for anything but scaffolding would just be extravagant in an area where wood is more rare. Not to worry though, dried mud in an area with no rain worth mentioning will do for walls, and wood scaffolding can give strength to dried mud. But if you do have access to wood, even if it's just branches, it's probably a good idea to make your shelter out of wood. In other parts of Africa rain might not be abundant, but still more common as in the sub-Sahara setting. Branches can give some strength to a building, and you can fill in the holes in between the branches with another material, such as dung, as a more durable substitute to mud to make the house windproof. In other areas, rain is very, very abundant during certain periods, for example during the monsoon. If you want to keep your head dry during the monsoon, you need a good roof. And the staggering amount of water that can drop within minutes, the roof should get rid of water easily and be able to deal with the weight of the water. A steeper roof angle can help with displacing the water and the water's weight. And overlapping big leaves make very good roof tiles. At least if you live in a tropical area, wood and other vegetation is abundant, so there's less stress about resources. By now I hope the geographical influences are pretty clear. The region of the world you live in defines the architecture to some extent, seen in the shapes and materials used. But technology and geography aren't the only influences on architecture. Traveling can be an important part in cultures. If you're going to travel a lot, it is useful to have a shelter that you can pick up and take with you. In such cases, the weight of the materials used is also very important. Other cultures make survival an art form and export the terrain for a temporary shelter wherever they go. 
The cultural shift from hunting and gathering to farming has a great influence on architecture. If you stay in one spot, it is worth your time and effort to make a more durable shelter. But if you are constant on the move, in very hostile terrain, and taking your house with you is not an option, you have to be creative. As simple as an igloo looks, the design is ingenious and flawless. Similarly like the roofs in regions with the monsoon, around the Arctic Circle you might want to invest in a steeper roof. Snow is more sticky as rain and can make a very thick blanket on a roof. This weight can make the roofs collapse, but the steeper the roof's angle, the easier the snow will slide off, using the laws of gravity to one's advantage. The cultural and geographical divide between the Arctic and the tropics couldn't be greater, and yet conventions regarding roof shapes are similar. There are a lot of gradations in vernacular architecture, because it's subject to a lot of different factors, like technology, culture, resources, etc. Design changes can be minute, but with great impact. I do hope that the basic shapes, the differences and similarities globally between cultures is clear. Since Minecraft doesn't have real-world physics or real resource stress, vernacular architecture in Minecraft resembles real life in no way. It's a step easy to skip when building, but from my personal experience, understanding the origins is important for a series of reasons. For example, understanding upon what later architecture forms are based, filling in blanks unable to find anything about when researching, or to give a built character a sense of realism. But I'll address this in another video. I do hope the background of architecture is more clear now, so you have a good foundation to add knowledge to that you might acquire. I do hope that the presentation was clear and that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like or comment as a sign of appreciation. If you want to learn more, suggest a topic or hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with future episodes. And if you have any questions, you can reach me through any of the options mentioned in the description. So this brings us to the end of the video. Have an awesome day.